Welcome to today's video. This is going to be the fifth in the playlist on Humminbird key button functions. And we are going to focus on the cursor control key today. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. And here we go. A like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated if you find the video enjoyable and helpful. The cursor control key, which is located right here, it has a top bottom arrow, right, left side arrow, is something very similar to a mouse on a computer. And if you are familiar with the mouse on the computer moving around the cursor, then you have a good understanding of what the cursor control key does. On a laptop, you have a mouse pad that will allow you to left or right click. And if you have an external mouse, it will also enable you to click on choices and the cursor control key will do that as well. Whenever I want to freeze the screen, I just have to use the cursor control key and hit any arrow. When I hit the cursor control key, it is also going to give me some information. So I can see from my depth lines that I am on the 30 foot line with my cursor. So it shows me the cursor depth at 30 feet. It is also going to show me the depth overall at that point where I froze the cursor. And the depth is 45.1 feet, which you, again, you can tell by your depth line over here. And it is also going to give me some navigational information as well, distance and bearing. The cursor control key also gives me the ability to manipulate the cursor. So if I hit the up arrow, the cursor goes up. And if I hit the left arrow, the cursor goes left. And it is going to change the cursor information and the depth information as well as the navigational information as you do that. Now, let's say that I want to save a waypoint on the top of this rock pile. I am going to move it over and I am going to move it up and I can lock it in right there and save that information. I don't want you to get locked into thinking that the arrows are limited to the north, south, east, west positions. They will also work diagonally. So if I, for example, put my finger in between the north and the west and I want to go in a northwest direction, you can see that I can go over to the top of the hump a little bit quicker by going diagonally. So think of it like a 360 degree compass where you can manipulate the cursor by going in different directions, not just north, south, east, and west. Let's look at a few ways that I could use the cursor. So right now my cursor is here. And if I take my arrows and I manipulate it down and I'm heading up to Lake Erie, and let's say I wanted to focus in on one of these waypoints. I can find it, there it is. And now I can just hit my plus button and just zoom it in. And so it allows me to move the cursor to find a waypoint. Another way that I could use the cursor is to mark a spot. So if I take my right arrow for the cursor control key, I just hit it to freeze the screen. And of everything I've driven by, this hump here looks like it has amazing potential. It's a huge school of bait here. You know, there's various fish scattered around it as well. So if I wanted to save it as a waypoint, even though this is technically historical data, I wanna save the waypoint right on that hump. So I can now just take that and maneuver the cursor control key and then I can go in and I'll talk more about the mark button later. But now you see I have the ability to mark a waypoint here. I just have to hit the right cursor and I can mark a waypoint on that spot, even though my boat is currently over here. So that's one of the advantages of using the cursor. Similarly, in down imaging, I can take my cursor and I just once again hit the bottom arrow. It doesn't really matter which arrow you use. You can you know, use any part of it to freeze it. Now I once again want to take and mark the top of the hump and I just put the cursor on it. Once again, I can hit my mark button 
and I don't have to be sitting right on top of it and I can go ahead and mark the waypoint. So that's another example of how I can use the cursor in down imaging mode. In side imaging mode, my current boat position is right here. So this is new, this is old data. But let's say I see this hump way back here. And even though my boat, once again, position is way up here, I can take the cursor and I can go down and I can mark the top of the hump. So I could take mark and mark a waypoint here. And let's say I wanted to give a couple other marks. So I marked one at the top. I could mark one at the side, mark another waypoint there. And I could also say, hmm, I want to have the boundaries of this. So I would take my cursor, bring it over here, and it's just hidden by the simulation, and mark that edge of it. So basically I have the top marked, I have each side marked, and you know, it's just gonna allow me to zero in on that target that I found with side imaging. If you have your Mega 360 set up properly with an iPilot link trolling motor and heading sensor, or you've added a compatible unit with the puck, then you could also save waypoints on your 360. So for example, I could take my cursor and bring it over here and looks like a potential root system of a tree over here or lay downs and I could put a waypoint on that. So the cursor once again allows me to manipulate my screen and the beauty of it is once again my boat is over here but I can mark a waypoint over here without driving my boat on top of it. And that is an incredible time saver and a very efficient process. In my down imaging video, you may have noticed that I used my cursor and I was able to take that cursor and I was able to zoom in. So let's take our plus button. I'll do more on the plus minus button in another video. But let's say I just zoom in. Now that gives me a zoom box. Let's say that I didn't really hit the target that I wanted to with the zoom, or I wanted to move it around in a zoomed in feature. I could hit the plus button again, zoom it in more, or I can minus it out. And as I look at it, I'm trying to determine what's in the area. So if I hold the arrow button, and I can move that box diagonally again. And I see over here, I wanna focus in on this bait ball. And so now I can maneuver it to where I want. And now I can see the bait ball here, a little bit more detail. It's got a, you know, interesting black hole here. You know, maybe a fish has kind of swam through the bait ball there potentially. You've got some larger fish here one, two, three, and there's other smaller fish around the bait ball as well. And it just gives you a larger view. But keep in mind that that ability to maneuver that zoom box is an advanced function that a lot of people may not be aware of. And it's a good tip to help you navigate through with that zoom box. If you're a tournament angler and you have two units at the console and you have two units at the front of the boat and you want to maximize your time on the water and be as efficient as you possibly can then you will want to pay attention to this next little tip and it's one that I use all the time so for example if I'm going on to the trolling motor at the front of the boat I am always going to put my two console units on standby and vice versa if I am at the console I am going to take my front two units and put them on standby and I've done a video earlier on the standby feature in this series so I'm just going to review it here with you right now. Let's say that I hit my power button and I now have all of the different options that come up with my power button selection. I don't want to have to do this on this unit and on my other unit because I had to click through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to get there. So 
once again, another video on the exit button. If I hit the exit button, I go to the top. But what a lot of you may not know is if I click the top arrow button right here, I immediately went to standby, click standby, and I'm in standby feature. So that literally takes about two seconds. And you are not only saving time by not clicking through those seven options times two if you have two units at the console or up front, whichever the case may be, I am also saving power. And when you are running, you know, electronics and live wells and all the things that we run in our boats these days in tournaments, then you want to save power and you want to be as efficient as possible. And that little trick is going to help you. For those of you not as familiar with the standby feature, I just hit my power button again and it's at the bottom on the right. And you can see that it immediately came back on. So as just a final review, power button, top of the cursor control key, standby and the right arrow and done and back on. And it's as simple as that. So there's no reason not to put it in standby. It is going to save wear and tear in your transducer because it will stop pinging when it is in standby mode. So keep those things in mind and be as efficient as you can on the water. I am making this video in simulation mode on this unit and I have changed the background to side imaging just for a little variety. If I hit the menu button and I hit it once, I am going to have a express menu for side imaging come up. And in order to navigate through that, I need to use the cursor control key. I can go all the way up here to the top and that shows me the different options that I have. As I showed you previously, you can take that top button and jump to the bottom, which is pretty cool as well. So your cursor control key is going to allow you to navigate through the menu. If I hit menu once, I get the express menu for the screen I'm on. If I hit it twice, I get the overall menu for the units. And once again, my cursor control key is going to allow me, if I hit left, is going to navigate through it. And once again, little tricks there. You noticed I went all the way from the far left to the right by hitting the left button. And similarly, if I hit the right button, I go all the way back to the beginning. So you don't always have to go all the way through. Once again, I, I'm on the far right, I hit the right button, I go back to the left. If I'm on the far left, I hit the left button, I go all the way to the right. Other than that, if you're in the middle, then yes, you have to navigate through one at a time. If I want to go into, for example, I'm in navigation mode, you can see it's highlighted right here. And if I want to go down through my navigation options, I can go all the way through to the bottom. Once I get to the bottom, you notice that if I hit the bottom button, it jumped to the top. I'll show you that again a little slower. So if I go all the way through, and I get to the bottom. If I hit it one more time, I jump back to the top. As an option, when I get to the bottom, I could have hit the exit button, and that also jumps me to the top. There are some of the menu items that require a little bit more navigation using the directional arrows on the cursor control key. So let's look at one example. So if I go into menu, menu, and I go into waypoints, routes, and tracks, and I hit the right arrow, and now let's say I go into options, I had to go up one, use the right arrow again, and then if I wanted to make a new waypoint, it shows me here, new, group i don't want to make a group and i would go down make a new waypoint and once again then i could plug the information in and just use the arrow key as you follow the prompts and you know that's one of the beauties of the hummingbird helixes they are pretty straightforward in terms of the you know tips and prompts to get you to where you need to be the units are quite user friendly. To get out of my menu items, I'm just gonna exit out and I'm back to side imaging mode here. And 
I can show you a few different features on here as well. Clicking on the menu item, if I use the top arrow again, it will jump me to the bottom. And if I want to go back to the top, I can simply just go back through and it's just another option to get quickly to the bottom. If I am in sonar mode and I want to go all the way down to the bottom and we'll notice right now that it is saying bottom view right here. If I wanted to scroll all the way down to the bottom of all the sonar options, if I hit my top arrow and once again, notice that there is an arrow pointing down and that means there's more options. So if I hit all the way down, you notice that I went down to the very, very bottom, which is a temperature graph. And you'll notice back up here that the bottom view is way up here. So I had all these additional options and it is a much quicker way to get to the second screen for the sonar menu. In today's video, I have focused on the cursor control key. It will allow you to navigate through the menu items and it will also allow you to manipulate the cursor. Those are basic skills that all Humminbird Helix users are going to need to know. If you are a beginning angler, then it is my hope in this video that you are more comfortable and confident with the units after watching this video. And for the more advanced users, I hope you have enjoyed some of the more advanced tricks, skills that you can do with the cursor control key. As always with my videos, if you find them enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. I invite you to share your questions or comments and I will make sure that I promptly reply to them. Thank you so much for watching the video and I will look forward to sharing my next video with you.